Okay, so features. First one I'm going to talk about is ZFX because it's my favourite open slabs killer app. Um, we're going to be doing a demo on this next week, so I do recommend you come along. It's some, some pretty cool stuff. Here's a brief overview of what it's all about. Um, ZFX is a sort of it's a file system and volume manager combined. Combined. Um, so instead of having to have you know a hardware made card um, where you you, know, you plug your disks into X or the control looks into spaces on your motherboard and it does all your RAID for you. This is a software based solution, kinda similar to LDM and Linux. Um, and basically allows you to combine disks for redundancy or for better performance. So if you want to strike your disk space, you can take all the space and just distribute your data across them so you get better performance, you can do that. Not the best idea though, because that means that if one of those disks fails, you lose all your data. It's much better to do something like mirroring, or what I do in my home sub file server, which is grade Z. Grade Z is grade 5, essentially. So what that does is you take, say, five disks, um, and use one of the disks from parity, so that you can restore your data if one of them blows up. Um, and the rest of it is used for data. So you get, if you go, a pool of n disks, you get n minus 1 disks worth of reasonable space. Now that's RAID 5, which is slightly different from RAID Z, in that RAID Z is better because it doesn't have the RAID 5 write hole. The RAID 5 write hole is a vulnerability of RAID 5, whereby if you write parity before you've fully committed the data, or vice versa, you end up with a corrupt disk. Um, so despite the fact you've got this protection of having a priority, if you get a power cut at the exact wrong moment, you can still end up with corrupt data. Everything in ZFS is a top, so you don't get that problem. In addition to that, you get end-to-end -end checksumming, so you know that if you need data from ZFS and it doesn't flag up with a checksum error, you know it's, it's valid, it's not been corrupted um, since you wrote it. You can do snapshots, which are just point-in-time copies of the entire file systems, um, kind of similar to what Time Machine does on MacOS. Are you the Mac fan? Who's the Mac fan? You're the Mac fan. So yeah, that's kind of like what Time Machine gives you. It's got a whole bunch of other stuff. You can set quotas on a file system by file system basis. You can do compression. You can do virtual lines. There's all sorts of really cool stuff you can do with this. And it's pretty easy to work with once you've got your head around how it works. So that's the interface. Definitely a fantastic application for running open slurs. Dtrace is one open slurs um, technology that I described in my, um, my kickoff event which I'm not going to be doing a demo on, there wasn't quite so much interest there. Um, it's still a pretty damn handy tool, it's actually built into a lot of the utilities that are in the Solaris, um, and in fact our latest storage systems, instead of being sort of custom made storage devices, they're actually just servers running Solaris and these use D-Trace for monitoring, it's really quite cool. Um, you don't need to do any messing around with um, compile flags or anything like that to get D-Trace running, you just write a script and attach it to a process, it just starts telling you stuff. And you can monitor basically anything you want, CPU, memory, whatever you like, anything that you're likely to be interested in when you're sort of debugging an application at the sort of operating system level, D-Trace will be able to tell you. The toolkit that comes with um, the OpenSlash distribution, in fact, does it come with OpenSlash distribution? No, I don't think it does actually. Um, I downloaded it the other day so I can uh, show you in action. Um, it includes quite a lot of handy scripts, so even if you don't know anything about DTRACE, you can actually download these scripts and keep an eye on what your system is doing, depending on what you're interested in. And obviously you can write your own. So let's go on to the next one, Zones. Zones, I am going to be doing a demo one, that's in a fortnight's time. And it's quite a lot of interest in that, which surprised me actually, because it's quite a simple technology. It's basically, you take one machine and you run multiple instances of open Solaris on it. But the interesting thing about it is that they share a single kernel instance. So instead of having all the overhead that you have with running a virtualization package like um, VirtualBox, you've actually got multiple instances of open Solaris running on the one machine with one kernel instance. So that means it's very easy to do things like resource management and you don't have to mess around with things like virtual machine images and stuff and all that kind of rubbish. You can just create them from the command line of Solaris, put them up, and then you've got your own little guest operating system with its own network interface, its own passwords, all the rest of it. So I'll be talking about that in two weeks' time. 
Um, there's a few other sort of notable ones. SMF is the service management framework. This is one for the techies. Um, those of you who know about RC scripts and how much of a pain in the neck they can be sometimes. Um, SMF basically solves that by giving a simple CLI for managing services. If you want to enable or disable a service and set it to automatically come up, etc., etc., you literally just type one command and it does it for you. Um, services are labeled startup and parallel when involved with RC scripts, which is the startup scripts that run um, at boot time on a traditional Unix or Linux system. It's that they all run one after the other, which takes ages. And quite a lot of them can actually run at the same time, which may, takes advantage of you know, multi-core systems like you can get today. Um, so that's kind of handy. The good thing is it still supports RC scripts. Um, so if you do have some sort of legacy applications that use them, you can still use them with SMF. FME is an interesting one if you've got the hardware that can do it. Um, it automatically detects hardware failures, and depending on what your uh, sensor abilities are, it can even do it before they occur. I've seen this happening on some of the sun systems I've worked with um, down south. And what it'll do is it'll dynamically disable um, hardware on a supported system. So, for example, if you've got a CPU that's failing um, in one of the sun's enterprise systems, Solaris so will notice that and go, right, take the CPU out of the system and the system keeps on running. So that's obviously quite cool if you're running servers and things like that. It means that you don't have downtime because of that problem. You can also do that um, on the high-end servers live. So say you want to add in some more CPUs and RAM to your instance of open Solaris, plug them in, tell Solaris what you've done, and it suddenly starts using the extra CPUs and RAM. It's pretty cool. Not likely to be doing that on your desktop PC or your laptop, though that might be slightly risky. So, those are the features. I think it's only fair that I tell you about the weaknesses of open source as well. Um, one of the good things about being a campus ambassador as opposed to a marketing person from some you know, salesman is that I can be honest. So, open source is a very young distro. Um, as I said, it's only in its second release. Um, and it's sort of building momentum as opposed to having built momentum, um, like Ubuntu, for example. Um, Ubuntu is very, very popular, so there's a lot of people using it. Um, and obviously, if you're using a Microsoft or an Apple operating system, there's a hell of a lot of people out there using it. Um, Open Flowers doesn't have that kind of community yet, so there's there's still a lot of rough edges here and there. Um, things like suspend to RAM, for example, can be a little bit flaky. But these are the, the, are the things that Sun's really focusing on as they develop it. So you really see you know, quite rapid development in Open Flowers. Power support's not as good as Linux. Um, so, for example, one of the reasons that I'm using a VM is that OpenSlash doesn't actually support my network card, my wireless network card, on this machine. However, there is a bug open, which I'm watching very carefully, um, to see when it's actually going to become available. What you can actually do is you can use Endis, um, which is a wrapper for Windows um, drivers. I haven't summoned up the courage and the time to actually try doing that on this laptop, it's quite new. Um, but you can get things working like that. Um, so what you might find, and I'll show you the utility that can um, tell you that later, is that the, the hardware on your system <coughs> won't be supported. Generally, if you've got NVIDIA drivers, Intel drivers, things like that, sorry, N NVIDIA or Intel hardware, you'll be laughing. But AMD and ATI can be a little bit more um, problematic. Package availability. Now, all of the common stuff that you're going to want is likely to be there. Um, so if you want your you know, multimedia applications, XMS, all that kind of stuff, if you want uh, web servers, a, a, uh, you know, a, a SAM stack as opposed to a LAMP stack, all of these things are on there. So it's likely that you'll be able to find the most common applications. However, there are some gaps. Um, in the IPS reports, I believe there are still something around four and a half thousand packages just now. So there's a lot of software packages out there. The uh, problem is, if you look at Ubuntu or something like that, they've got tens of thousands of packages. So they've got they've got a big head start on us. As I said, this is being worked on by some that really sort of pushing to get as much of, of this done as possible. And you can get involved as well. You can actually compile your own stuff and submit it. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, that's a, a good way to help work out. And it's not really a weakness, because this is just like any operating system. There is a learning curve. You know, some things in OpenSolaris work differently to any other operating system. There are certain tools you have to use 
things that are different. Um, but that's where things like the awesome community come in because you can get help from people like me, from Jason, um, from folk all around the world. There's all sorts of sun forums and stuff like that out there. And it's with awesome as well, which will let you learn about this sort of stuff. So there is a learning curve, but there are people around who can help you with it. 